Greetings, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, those who are watching virtually, those who will be watching on YouTube as well. I'm Mayuri and I'm going to be talking about something which is very close to my heart and I hope that we'll be together able to understand a little bit more about these three roles which are very important and very crucial to start a club, to strengthen a club and then to sustain a club. And before I even go there, I would like to just ask our audience, how, I mean, when did you, you can unmute. How did you, when did you join Toastmasters? How long ago was it? Anybody? I mean, I can take one or two um, answers. 2016, 17. 16, 17. Someone else? That's almost six, seven years now. I joined in 2023. 23. That's barely a year and a little more than that. Correct. Anybody else? I have joined Toastmasters in 2021. 21. So that's three years. So the one who uh, joins about six, seven years ago would definitely know much more about how we start clubs. Maybe they've been a part of demo meetings and also how to sustain those clubs because they must have seen highs and lows during the pandemic. We, we saw a real dip as well. But then we always have to come back into trying to find a ground where our clubs and our members find value. And so they continue to grow and they continue to renew. And that's what is called to start, of course, but then also to strengthen a club and its environment, its climate, and then eventually leads to clubs which are sustainable and self-sustainable. So let's talk about these three roles, which are very crucial. And uh, they are the three pillars, I would say, to any master's organization to any club. It's the role of a sponsor, a mentor, and then a club coach. So I will go through them one by one. Allow me to just take a moment to share my screen. Um, one minute. And let me know once my screen is visible. Can someone let me know if the screen is visible? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Let me then go back and share screen. Here you are. And also let me know if you can see the transitions because otherwise I wouldn't be able to see uh, them. Yes, you can see the screen. Could you just share with like all the way one or two screens? Yes, we can see it's changing. Uh, changing. Can we go to the next? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Perfect. So as we can see, it's to start, strengthen, and sustain club climate. So the three rules, and before we even go, when we talk of Toastmasters, and all of us, of course, are passionate Toastmasters here from 2016 to 2022, 20, 23, whenever we've joined. I've also joined somewhere in 2017, January. So here we have what our founder said. We learn best moments of enjoyment. So even if it's a very serious role of sustaining club climate, Let's do it in moments of enjoyment. Let's enjoy and have fun while we learn and we grow as Toastmasters, as leaders, as public speakers, as orators, as communicators. So we learn best in moments of enjoyment. And thank you to Dr. Ralph C. Smedley that we're celebrating 100 years of Toastmasters this year. In fact, just 20, on the 22nd of October was the centenary celebration in the sense that that's when they had the first ever Toastmasters meeting. And to look at it 100 years now is something really commendable. So let's go ahead and talk about the three roles. So we have start a club, and then we have to strengthen a club, and then finally to sustain a club. If you look at it broadly, a club sponsor is someone who's going to help you start a club. A club mentor is someone who's going to help you strengthen that club. And then a club coach is someone who's going to finally help you sustain that club so that it doesn't go down and there's always an up uphill movement. So let's take the first one for to begin with, club sponsor. So before I even go, maybe just to keep asking you, I will probably ask you a question here and there. Uh, you can see on the screen the types of clubs that we have. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'll go back. We have broadly corporate clubs, community clubs, and college clubs. In our district, we have almost equal distribution of all the three, corporate, college, and community clubs. We also have clubs which are advanced, which means Toastmasters who have a certain level of uh, paths or levels already completed, they form an advanced club. And there is also something called a speciality club. For instance, we have a club called Satvik. There is another club for entrepreneurs. 
There could be one for architects, there could be one for lawyers, there could be one from the medical field. Those are called in specialty clubs. For teachers, for instance, those are specialty clubs. So in our district, we do have corporate, college, and community clubs at large. These are the kinds of clubs that we have. Now let's come to how do we begin to start, let's say, forming a new club, something that every district needs. So let's talk about what, what will a club sponsor do. I'm going to start as a club sponsor. You're a Toastmaster member, of course, of a club in good standing. That's the first criteria. Now, help your duties would be, of course, to help set up a new club, help set up regular meetings of that club, help with paperwork. And it's very easy. The paperwork doesn't take too much time. But then that's also one of your responsibility sponsor. And then you have to plan the presentation of the chart topic. So these are going to be globally your duties, which means how do we begin? Let's take an example, just for an example. Let's take a corporate club. Now, at all, you are interested in starting a corporate club. The first question that uh, you would be asking is, um, is, what's the size of this company? How many employees are there? And why do we ask this question? Because if it's a company which has barely 40, 50 employees and a Toastmasters club insists upon a minimum 20, then in case somebody goes, is absent, it's not going to be really very possible to conduct meetings, which is why we recommend to have at least 200 to 250 minimum employees before we approach them. The next question the sponsor asks is, well, where is it located? What is their revenue? Do they have a paying capacity? Because you know that we do ultimately have a membership fee to pay. And then who is it who's the key decision maker in this company? Who am I going to be talking to? Or the team is going to be talking to? Or the CGD, the club director will be talking to? All of this is something that the sponsor is going to be involved with. Maybe not directly taking decisions, but the sponsor needs to be aware of everything because that's how you're going to help charter a club. So that you know your basics the size of the company, the location of the company, who is the person whom, is, whom I'm going to contact? Is it the HR or is it somebody else? What strategies do we put in, put in place to ensure that this club charters, that, this, that these members will continue to uh, conduct meetings regularly at what frequency? Any initiatives that we plan, for instance, after every two months or three months, there will be a get together. There will be a company celebration where we are going to celebrate Toastmasters. Or if it's a community club, we'll go out for a picnic. If it's a college club, there will be an annual festival happening, some annual fest happening in college. So the Toastmasters will be given some kind of um, maybe leeway or limelight. This is when the sponsor, working in hand, of course, with the CGD, sets the right expectations in that club which we want to charter. So what are the priorities going to be? So these are your focus points. If at all, let's say that company is a very famous company and they've been in the news, be updated. Because when you go and meet the HR, as a Toastmaster, as a sponsor, with the team that goes, be updated with the company and it's uh, any anything that they are famous for. That is your groundwork as a sponsor. So it really is because that portrays that you have done your hard work and you are now helping others become Toastmasters too. So that's going to be your uh, target list initially as a sponsor. Now let's ask about the introduction. So first, of course, there will be an introduction, an appointment will be made. This is largely taken care of by the club group director, but you will be involved with the preparation of the meeting. You're going to share, if there are other corporations of the same, you know, when we talk of one IT company, we give references to other com companies as well, where we already have Toastmaster clubs in those com companies. What can we as sponsors do? We can do our homework and write down beforehand that yes, there is a company already in, let's say, High Tech City or in Knowledge City or in Gachiboli, somewhere, wherever there is. Discuss finances, very important. And before we go out to discuss finances with the company, the corporate, let us ourselves know the finances very clearly. So let's be clear that an in, uh, in, you, a first time charter fees of $125. Then there is a six month fee that we begin with, which is $60. And then the next cycle is again going to be $60, but somewhere we are going to merge you into the financial cycle. As a sponsor, know your finance, the finances. And there might be, depends upon the company, depends upon country, there might be a tax as well, the local taxes as well. Know your basics, know the fundamentals very clearly. And then, of course, 
in line with the club growth director and the rest of the team, be a part of organizing a demonstration meeting, a demo meeting. That is after we've met the HR, we've discussed the finances, we've discussed with them that yes, we want to, now let's do a demonstration meeting. After the meeting is done, of course, the, the team will be there and invariably it requires at least about 10, 11 members. We introduce who we are because we might be Toastmasters. Today we are serving in our capacity as a sponsor or maybe as a, a role player in a meeting, but we also are professionals. We also are students. We also come from a community and that makes it more relatable. You know, the company also realizes, yes, these are people who are doing something else in life besides Toastmasters as well. There will always be a question answer. And for them to ask questions and for us to answer them, we should be well prepared as sponsors, as part of that demo meeting team. And the more we read up, the more strong we are with our answers. And I would strongly to read up as much as you can before you start your role as a club sponsor. And then if there are any success stories, because it does make a difference in that team of nine, 10 people who go there, let's say if it is a college club, that we are going to, a new college that we are going to. Talk of success stories of another college where students got very good placements because they are Toastmasters. That makes a difference. Talk of if it's a corporate club that you're intending to charter. Talk of a club uh, where there are members who've had a hike in their uh, during their appraisal because they are Toastmasters. Those are success stories. Refer to them. But again, like I said, be prepared when you uh, refer to those stories. And then, of course, before you say bye-bye for that particular demo meeting, please announce when is there going to be the pre-charter meeting. And why pre-charter? Because still now the club is not chartered. And during this pre-charter meeting, it's always nice to start involving the would-be Toastmasters, the members of the, the employees of that corporate or maybe the students of that college, and start involving them Invite them to take speeches, deliver speeches. Invite them to take the role of a timer, our counter, perhaps not of the general evaluator or the Toastmaster of the day. Once they start feeling involved, they're going to definitely be more active, participate more actively, and very soon you'll have your 20 required number of members and your club will charter. So after the pre-charter meeting, start mentoring them for these roles as well. Let's go to the paperwork. The paperwork would include, let me just try to remove uh, the screen from here. Okay. All right. Uh, the paperwork that we start is, of course, like I said, the forms are fairly simple. One, two, three, four, five, six, and that's about it. This paperwork, you, if you have not already studied, please make it a point to study as a club sponsor. They're all available on the Toastmasters website. You can also reach out to the club growth director. He'd be happy to help you. You can reach out to me as well. And then help with collecting those dues, the sums that I've already mentioned. And invariably, there is one person in the corporate who's going to be collecting the dues. So this person is going to collect and hold on to the payments from 20, mandatorily to begin with, you need 20, 20 members. And this person is going to hold on to the payments till the paperwork is completed. We need a few signatures. We need to turn in those forms. Um, when and where will the meeting be held? Who's sponsoring the $125? And we need to also mention, there's a form where we mention the details of payment. How many members? Is it 20, 21, 22? Are they transfer members? Are they reinstating members? So all of this will have to come into those forms. And then once all the forms are done, we have our 20 members, we send all of it to Toastmasters International and your club is chartered. So at this point, for the role of a sponsor, if you have any questions, please ask. Till the sponsor. Um, was it? Yeah. So sorry. yeah, uh, one question. So there's something a confusion that comes up is well, as a sponsor, uh, like mm -hmm. when we pitch the clubs, uh, we say the potential club that you have dedicated four members in board. But sponsors, as sponsors, what sometimes I see is once the club gets chartered, sponsors do step back. I do understand, mm -hmm. but is mm -hmm. this something that mandatory or like till the first six months, if four members are being involved along with the mentor sponsors, is that okay? 
So the sponsors, so sponsors begin with helping charter a club and they help, they handhold them right till the club is chartered. After that, they can still, I mean, because these sponsors could be new members, they could be, because you're learning, right? So someone can be a seasoned Toastmaster who's offering to sponsor. And thankfully, I mean, I, I when I joined Toastmasters, I used to think it means paying from my pocket, but that's not so. A club sponsor does not pay from their pocket at all, as we've just now seen all of it. It's just that we are helping the club to charter, a new club to charter. Now, there are going to be two dedicated mentors. I'll talk about them very soon. There are going to be two dedicated mentors who are going to help with the next six months. But then since these two, who are the two club sponsors, there are two club sponsors with every new club charter. Since these two have understood the dynamics of the company, the corporate or the college, they've already met these 20 people. They've helped. It's nice if they can gradually carry over even once the club has chartered and then maybe after a month or two they can probably stop because by then the mentors have taken over the sudden transition sometimes leaves those members a little unsure because still now they are used to two sponsors and the day the club charters suddenly there are two new mentors not that it cannot be done but it's nice to have a transition a gradual transition to make the that yes there's there was a transition now these are people are always introduced so when the club growth director introduces these are the two sponsors they are going to help us with all the paperwork. They're going to help us with all the pre-charter meetings. And we're going to be there to see that the club charters. Now, once the club is chartered, we again introduce those, your sponsors are here. And these will be the two mentors who are going to help you for the next six months. So there the club knows there's no sudden surprise on them. The club knows that gradually the mentors are going to start taking education sessions, etc., And the sponsors will gradually go back, go back. And then of course, the sponsors are going to eventually write to Toastmasters International for a credit. I think a little while ago, I mentioned the word uh, re reinstating member or transfer member. When a new corporate is being chartered, we need 20 minimum. Now, all 20 can be completely new. All right. There could be some who have been Toastmasters somewhere in their life, whether in this district or another, anywhere in the world, they must have their permanent number or they must have a valid email ID as well. So when we are filling up the form, we mention that they are a transfer member. So they do not pay the one-time lifetime membership fee. They don't, that's waved off, which is why when we start taking details of the 20 members, we ask them, have you been a Toastmaster in the past? Because then we need to fill in those details in the forms as well. So this is something that we need to also keep in mind. A transfer member, a reinstating member, a dual member, has already paid a lifetime membership. So they will not be paying the lifetime membership here. Okay. Uh, the next one now, uh, one second. Yes. Once you have successfully served as a club sponsor and the club has chartered, you can ask the club president or any officer to write to Toastmasters International World Headquarters and you will receive a certificate and a confirmation. And that will be, Count it as a credit towards Distinguished Toastmaster whenever you want to apply for one. You can apply for it. So there's a credit given for the role of a club sponsor as well. Let's go on to the next role, which is that of a mentor. And I just love what Steve Jobs said. My job is not to be easy on people. I am definitely not. My job is not to be easy on people. My job is to take these great people that we already have and to push them and make them even better. And that's what, as a mentor, we do. Now, mentoring has two great, uh, major, uh, let's say, types of mentoring at Toastmasters. Today, in this session, we're talking about strengthening the clubs that have just chartered, okay? There is another set of mentoring, which is one-to-one -one mentor, mentor and mentee, mentor and protege. That mentoring is, once you're already a Toastmaster, maybe for any number of years, and then we talk about that mentoring. We will not be going into detail there. Maybe we'll take a few questions, but largely it's the mentoring that will happen to a new club. So let's discuss that. So the role and responsibility of a club mentor. Who's a mentor? I mean, I've, I know I've already written over there, but would anyone have any other uh, definition? Even if it's not definition, an idea about what does a mentor do? It's someone who shares their knowledge, someone who shares their expertise, Anything else that we'd like to share with being a mentor? 
Anybody? What does a mentor do? Uh, well, just okay, to add, uh, so as a mentor, the same thing that we do for one-on-one -on -one as a member, we do the same for the club as an overall, like guiding them. Uh, first of all, is assigning the men new mentors to the new me members. And also sit along, see how the club will progress, set up the education sessions for them. Absolutely. True, true. So as a mentor, and this right time, right now, pardon me, we are talking about a club mentor for a new club charter. Now imagine the club has chartered, but of course they do not have an idea what's a distinguished club program. They don't know what is, uh, what are your contests. They don't know what is, uh, how to structurize a speech or how to give good evaluations. They're totally new, except perhaps there's one or two who have already been Toastmasters. So it is these two club mentors, and we have two club mentors who are assigned to any new club that charters. Now, ideally, these two mentors should have at least some knowledge about Toastmasters and every, everything that they can share. Because if they themselves are barely six months old, they would not have as much insight about Toastmasters as, they, as is required for them to share with a new club, which is where for a sponsor, it's easy to understand and take roles because even in six months, you do learn a lot. But for a mentor, you need to know a little bit more. And there are certain um, resources with World Headquarters on the website, which we definitely make use of when we start our mentoring sessions in a club. Now, as per Toastmasters guidelines, the mentor is, uh, two mentors are there for six months from the time of charter. Now, assuming that a club meets twice in a month, that would be roughly about 12 sessions. This is when it is an annual club. If it's a semi-annual club, they might meet three or four times in a month, which means there are more sessions, more meetings in a month. As a mentor, it is very important that between the two mentors, because each one of us also has our own work, the two mentors decide that, okay, I will take up this meeting, this session. In the next meeting, you can take up this session and this meeting, so plan it out, okay? So let's go ahead with why we need a mentor. Because we set the base, we start a new club. We want to ensure that the club starts strong and it is fully functional by the end of the six months when we start taking a leave. We have to make sure that all those club officers, the seven club officers understand their duties, that they know that they have to perform them and help the rest of the members as well. There is also something which is the Toastmasters promise, which I believe is extremely important to be shared once a club charters. And in every club meeting, if we begin with the promise, it's a wonderful way to start a meeting. And that sets the tone that every point in that Toastmasters promise holds so much value. And that is something that as a mentor, we can start with a new club. We also in our clubs have something called best speaker, best evaluator, best role player, et cetera. Start doing those because they are forms of recognition. Uh, in a, as a club mentor, help them understand. So you have, we have seven club officers. So when the club charters, you have a president, you have a vice president education, you have a vice president public relations, vice president membership, you have a secretary, a treasurer, sergeant at arms. Each one of them are new. They are raw. They have no idea what role they have to play. As a mentor, take a session during one of their meetings for 15 minutes maybe, and then they will understand that role. Now you as a mentor, both of you as a mentor to the club, you have to prioritize what is important to be shared with the club today. Let's start with let's eating rules. Toastmaster of the day, table topics master, grammarian. They do have a little knowledge, of course, during the pre-chart, pre-charter meetings, but let's help them understand these are the meeting rules and how can we do them to the best of our ability. And then you realize that very soon there are contests coming around the corner. So maybe now you will prioritize and help take an education session with scripting, drafting a speech, because that's important. Some speech, uh, sessions later, you realize that there is a message that comes from the PQD office that we need certain distinguished goals. Well, take a session on distinguished club program. What is it? How do you fill up the you know club success plan? How to conduct moments of truth? 
There is an entire series called the Better Speaker series. There is an entire series called the Successful uh, Club series and then the Leadership Excellence series. So you have these series where you can take out PDFs or PPTs, PowerPoint presentations from them. Use these during your sessions as a mentor. That is the way you will help the new club know little by little <coughs> everything that there is to know about Toastmasters. It's not going to be possible in just 12 sessions, but let's try to prioritize all that there is to learn first at, at, at a new in a new club. Of course, this we have already discussed. Prepare for help the VP education, for instance, with the agenda. How do we invite speakers? How do we encourage them to take up roles? The club meeting program, tools, etc. Maintain always 20 members because very soon we start seeing that some members maybe for various reasons do not renew. How do we ensure that there is a membership drive to do? As a club mentor, we really need to help the new club become strong and functional is at least by the time six months are up and we are ready to let them be on their own. But then when we say be on their own, it doesn't mean it's just six months, we just suddenly stop. We still reach out to them. We still ask them, what is it that we can do to help them? That's how we continue to maintain a mentor relation with the club members. Along with this, it's also important, like I think uh, Anish mentioned a little while ago, that in a club of 20 members, all new, all new to Toastmasters, they need someone to reach out to. They need someone to ask on a one-to-one -one level as well. I've written a speech. Can you review it, please? I'm taking the role of the grammarian. How do I take it? I'm taking the role of an evaluator. I have no idea what to keep. These mentors and the two of them cannot take up all the 20 mentoring. It will be very difficult for them. That's where we invite the mentors reach out to other members of the district. We are a district of 1,500 members. Start reaching out to one another and finding out, can you help, please? This is a new club. We need a mentor. Can you take one or two personal mentees and help them with just this bare minimum, speech writing, role, that's all. And I think if all of us contribute a little bit more, a little bit more, each one of us take one or two mentees, everyone would have a mentee then. For a new club, this is really important because they've just joined the family. They've just become Toastmasters. They need that much hand-holding. So as a mentor, not only are you helping the club as a whole, um, helping them with their meetings, etc., I'm helping them understand more and more about Toastmasters, the documents, the laws, etc. But you're also helping individual Toastmasters members learn more and more and give them that mentor strengthening. And trust me, there is a bond that builds over the passage of weeks and months between the mentor and the mentee. I know for a fact how much I've benefited. 2017, when I joined Toastmasters, I had no clue, absolutely no clue what is Toastmasters. And uh, I think it was within the next two, three months, it was probably that I was assigned a mentor who was then a division director. So obviously someone who knew a lot about Toastmasters. I used to ask every question that I possibly could and never ever was I, you know, told or, or told that, you know, maybe call later. Every question was answered. I had a lot of them. And to date, I mean, of course, I have grown as a, as a Toastmaster. So has my mentor. But even now, if I give a call, I know I'll, I have a mentor there who's going to help me no matter what. So that bond that one makes is something very precious to Toastmasters. So that's a mentor that we start with. So initially, of course, we start with a club and gradually we strengthen not just the club 20 members, but we also start going out outside the club as well. And that's where the second part of the mentoring comes in. One-to-one -to -one mentoring, even with clubs that are already in place in the district. But if each one of us just takes on one or two, everyone will have a mentor. So this let's say our expertise, I wouldn't even call it expertise, but whatever I know, I share. And in doing so, not only they do they learn and grow, but so do I. There is so much pride and there's so much joy when we see members whom we have helped somewhere 
grow into speakers and and contestants and winning and that's where we feel that we have also grown as as beings as mentors as leaders and so we prove ourselves to be good leaders as well and of course we are investing in the future not just of these 20 people but 1500 of district 126 and maybe more beyond the future of toastmasters and all of this was definitely going to build more skills in each one of us and towards the end Officially, after six months, you can ask, like we did with the club sponsor, so also for the club mentor, uh, you can ask the president of the club to write to world headquarters and let them know that you have completed six months and now you want to gain credit, receive the certificate of club mentor. And they'll send it back to you. And again, you can store it and save it because eventually when you apply for your distinguished Toastmaster, you will need it. That's for a club mentor. So I bet if there are any questions at this point, please let me know. Uh, hello, Mayuri, I have a question. Yes. Uh, coming to, uh, so as a club mentor, what are few goals that I can set to the new club in the first one, two months? As a club, so now again, uh, the first two months, I would say, is first of all, let's make sure that we get all 20 people involved. What invariably happens is not on 20 can gain um, a speaker slot. But then the ones who don't get a speech slot, let's say in the first or the second meeting, they don't attend the third meeting. And that becomes once you don't attend a meeting and the second time you don't attend, by the third time your interest is already waned and you do not want to become a Toastmaster. You don't want to continue. That is very risky and dangerous. So as a club mentor, the first thing is to ensure that members attend meetings. That's one of those club promises as well, to attend club meetings regularly. And for them to see value, have individual people. Having taken at least one speech, if possible, or a role like a to Toastmaster of the Day, Grammarian, Evaluator, etc. But each one of you should have had one brush with public speaking. I do. I would love to see you on the days on the um, stage. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt me. Excuse me. So we lost a connection between for you. So could you repeat? Sorry. Uh, Where was I? What was the last word that you heard? Um, I think you're just starting on the answer about the mentor. Okay. Answer. We lost the okay, so I would request you to the answer. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I'm so sorry. The connection is pretty weak today at my end. Um, so when we start with the new club, it is important to uh, instill in those new members the feeling of belonging, the wanting, the wanting to come to a meeting. If they don't want to come to a meeting, very soon they'll stop coming to a meeting, and that's very risky. So in the initial one, two months, make sure that they come to a meeting and so encourage them to take part in whatever role they can. Let's say in a typical meeting, you only have about 14, 15 people actively participating. What about the other six, seven? Well, they can participate as table topics speakers. That's also coming forward on a stage and speaking. So make sure that everyone gets at least one or two minutes, five minutes to speak on stage. And by rotation, everyone does that. Ensure that they all learn that that's the reason why they're coming to Toastmasters. And when you have an education session, prioritize what is important. If you are chartering in the month of September and you have, you know, I don't know if you have contests around the corner and people want to deliver speeches and want to contest, then you could probably do a speech writing uh, session as one of your first, first goal because they would need it. And in the next session, you can talk about meeting roles. That is something as a mentor, you'll have to set your goals. Make sure all 20 come to the meeting, take up a tiny role, but they do come. That should be your major goal. Just attending club meetings regularly. Everything else starts falling in place once that is done. Got it. Thank you so much. Any other, yeah. All right. Any other question? Okay. Um, let's go to the third. So we talked about <coughs> starting a new club. We talked about how to strengthen the club that has just. Like 
my area only. There are two other clubs. There are three other clubs. How uh, about maybe, doing a session? Uh, sorry, maybe if I may again, there was again a network issue. A lag? And so okay. you, yes, lag was there. You were about to start from about the start of the club, strengthening the club. I will. That, that okay. it kind of ended. Yeah. When we talk of strengthening a club, when we talk about, let's say, a new club that has chartered in my area. I'm an area director. And I have three more clubs. And I know I've chartered a new club. So, of course, there are two mentors. But how about doing a joint session with them, with two clubs of my area, three? Because they will network. They will learn from one another. They will also help and share best practices. That's also learning. That's also growing. It would be wonderful if within my area, I can help one new club with other existing clubs. That was also strengthening a club climate. That is also something that I can do as a mentor. I reach out to the area director and we do it together. So this is all about club sponsor, which was starting a club, then strengthening a club, moreover as a mentor. Let's come to the third, which is the coach, club coach. So I know what Michael Jordan has said, but this Joe coach is not really the one who will help you with athletics, okay? A coach is someone who sees beyond your limits and guides you to greatness. According to you, who's a club coach? And I'm talking about a club coach in the context of Toastmasters. Can someone unmute and share, please? Uh, well, club coach, someone, to be honest, is like someone who has been through the situation or somehow has experienced or know about it because club is in a bit of a peril and you need to give instant solution and set up a strategy or goal or set okay. the roadmap for the club to revive stronger mm -hmm. and so it's like overall in term if I can say mentor the club as well as sustain and help them grow so that they okay. can grow on their own. So you used a word peril so a club is not doing too well and there is some reason so let's ask why why do we need a club coach what could be the reasons that this club uh, chartered any club for that matter is now not in that, that good a condition as we would want it to and so why do you think could could this situation arise any idea the previous goals which is the club chartered are now not in sync not, and not met okay yes. okay yes so there are multiple reasons, you know, for instance, we charter a club, but it's the management that initially is very, very supportive. But over the passage of time, the management changes and a new team comes in and they're not perhaps as supportive of the movement of Toastmasters. And so Toastmasters takes a back seat. It's not as big a priority. We need to then reach out once again to the new management to help them understand the transformative power of Toastmasters. In Toastmasters, we need to appoint a club coach when the membership strength falls down to 12 or less than 12, because then that means that the club really needs someone to help them come back. So that's your first reason. The second reason could be quite naturally people transfer, move out, change cities, change jobs, and no new members join. So there is membership crunch. Another could be that the meetings are not no longer very fun. There is no activity, creativity. It's very mundane. It's very repetitive. And so the climate of a club tends to become very rote. So we need to revive the club with creative table topics, speaker thons, get guests, do guest marathons, do keynote sessions, do joint meetings, meet out somewhere in the open. Something we'll have to do to help bring back that club and the climate. So let's talk about the role of a club coach then. Why does a club need a coach? We've just discussed that. Also, sometimes even financial reasons could be reasons that the club faces a crunch in membership. The criteria to appoint a club coach now, the club has to have between three, 12 members, not more than 12. Now, who can be a club coach? It's a member who is, of course, a paid member, but that person cannot be a member of the same club that needs a club coach. And then how many club coaches, up to how many club coaches can district appoint? Two. Because two sponsors to start a club 
two mentors to continue to strengthen the club. Now we can appoint up to two coaches to sustain a club. And then it is important that both these club coaches complete something called the club coach module, which you will find in your uh, login ID. You can find it there. And then so also does the president or any officer of the club. There are three to 12 members. Any club officer needs to also complete the club coach module. Then we can officially appoint two club coaches to the club that needs help or hand holding. Hand -holding. So club coaches and the club officer have to complete the club coach module. Now, the club coach, there's a lot of work that a club coach would have to do because this is a club that was, um, I wouldn't use the word struggling. I would probably use the word rising. They need support. They are rising. But then we need the club coach, coaches need to build a rapport, a rapport with the members. So first of all, understand the environment. What is it that is the problem? Once we understand and we diagnose what is the situation, then we can bring about solutions. So we help the club develop goals, short-term goals, and eventually the first one will, of course, be to gain members. And in this way, when we work handhold with our clubs, there are several, a few clubs in our district where we do have a crunch. And when we reach out to them, we have the support, but we have to continuously be with them as club coaches, help them run their meetings, help them run their membership drives, continue with PR activities so that they do spread the word of the club and you get members come back. And I'm telling you, a club coach definitely can turn things around for a club. Now, we, there's a lot of, you can see on the screen, there's a lot of work that needs to go into being a club coach. So there's a lot of teamwork that you will do. Now, mind you, you yourself are, of course, already a working professional, but somewhere, there is this sense of wanting to give back to Toastmasters, which is so strong that you say, let me do whatever I can to help bring back this club to plus, you know, 20, 12 members plus more. And that's how you will bring value addition in your own unique style to help the club. So there'll be meetings that you will have to do with them, progress charts that you, you will make with every meeting, even if it's eight members. Take a couple of your friends, Toastmasters, to conduct a meeting, do a creative meeting, recognize members who achieved, even if it's one level, one project, publish it, help the club understand that it is important to also showcase and appreciate if they allow on social media, if they have a club website, etc. Every small effort as a club coach will count. And it's, it, the you know, Moliere said, the greater the obstacle, the more glory in overcoming it. Now, as a club coach, you know that this club is already not doing too well. So there is more work required from your end. But once that obstacle is, is gone and you overcome it, there's so much glory. You will feel so much pride. And as a club coach also, you can ask for uh, credit. We'll come to that a little later. So there's a lot that you will learn as a club coach. Of course, building teams, working with them, your own leadership skills, how to be a good negotiator, how to be a good convincing person, because of course the club is only less than 12 members. And then finally, you're going to also earn credit towards the Distinguished Toastmaster Award. Here I can probably also tell you, so we also see that districts that have club coaches, districts I'm talking about, not just clubs, districts that promote the club coach program have higher quality clubs. Why? Because there's someone to help, you know, some seasoned Toastmaster perhaps, some senior Toastmaster perhaps, to help those clubs get back members and help them participate at district events. The more club participation, the better it is in the DCP program, et cetera, and more successful, successful is that district. And as a club coach, you can definitely, add, uh, once your club reaches the distinguished um, club program and reaches a, achieves the title of a distinguished club, you can write to Toastmasters International and gain credit as a club coach. That will again go towards your distinguished Toastmaster status eventually. So this is about a club coach. Tough, you would ask me? I would say perhaps a little bit, not as much because you already know, the club already knows what's a meeting. They know what are meeting roles. They know 
what it is like to write a speech. It's just that you don't have members. Let's work together to bring members. Let's work on PR. Let's bring in creativity and the club will bounce back. And you just need distinguished status or above, select distinguished presidents, distinguished, and you can gain credit as a club coach as well. So that is the end of the club sponsor role, the club mentor role, and then of course the club coach role. From starting a club to strengthening it and to finally sustaining a club. So if there are any questions now, I would be happy to answer. And I'll stop sharing perhaps my screen and we can discuss. Uh, so maybe I have just one question, uh, yes. not from the data one, but from the club sponsor point of view, where it's something yes. with the introduction of the GST comes up. So now there are oh, some okay. the cooperate clubs when we do, there are some who are having some sales rules where they're exempted of the yes. GST. Now, as a yes. club sponsor, should I be aware of it or should, would I be getting the information on what it is? Uh, so since we all in our district, particularly in India, we all know that we have to now, from now onwards, from the 9th of October, we do have to pay a GST as well. So it's good that we are aware about We should be aware about, about it. Now, how much is it? How much does it happen to talk with your club pro director just before you're going to meet the would-be club? Uh, even, even before you're going to meet Know your facts and figures. It's always important, like I was talking about the club sponsor role. It's always important to know where am I going? Is it a corporate? Is it a community? Is it a college? How much will we be paying? Are they exempt from GST because they fall under healthcare maybe? They fall under certain government educational sectors maybe? Do they already have a certificate of exemption from the government of India? N know that you will need this information and accordingly you do your calculations and let them know. So yes, Anish, it is important to know beforehand how much would the final figure be so that we are not caught unawares and we don't have to say, I'm sorry, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah that's, that would be all from my end. Anybody else, any question? There's also, I did not touch uh, because we were in this uh, one hour, I just wanted to focus more on the club sponsor, the club mentor, and the club coach roles. But there's also another mentor program, which is a beautiful program that is put forward by Toastmasters. And I encourage everybody to personally do it. We all have access to it, which is the Pathways Mentor Program. Now that we have a new base camp, if you log in camp, you will see that you can have a Pathways Mentor Program activated once you've done level two. I think it is after level two. I would strongly encourage everyone to do a Pathways Mentor program, be a Pathways Mentor, because then you would know very deeply how does Pathways work. This is an education program offered by Toastmasters International. How does it work? I need to know it before I can start helping others understand about it. And throughout your level one and level two, you will learn the nuances of how to write your speech and how to evaluate one. You will know all of that. If you are more as an already certified Pathways mentor, then you'll be able to help better as a mentor, your protege or your mentees, whether it is a new club or an existing club. So that is again, something that I would encourage everyone to do. But it's a long-term process. Huh? It takes about, uh, so even in Pathways mentoring, there are different, it's like a path. It's a complete path. So you start with mentoring someone on a short term, their short term goals. You have one-on-one -on -one mentees, you also have to mentor someone for a period of six months and you have to keep a logbook, keep a track record. How much have they grown in the last six months? Because you being a mentor to them, they are learning, but you will also gain credit for those six months that you have invested in their growth. So all your hard work and time will not go waste. You are going to get a Pathways Mentor Certification as well, which is something to be very proud of. So that's the Pathways Mentor Program, but that's not a part of the initial club mentor, but because it is mentoring, so I thought I'll just mention that as well. Anybody, any other questions? We have about a couple of more minutes. All right, cool. I think we are done then. So either I was very clear or it went so fast that people lost track of it. But either ways, thank you so much, uh, Anish.
for uh, this opportunity. It has been wonderful for me to revise all over again. And I was just exploring the new look of Basecamp and the navigation, and at least the home page, I find it's a little more easy now. So I still have to explore in detail, but it's a good one. So I'm happy to happy to continue with my journey too as a Toastmaster. Thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, back to you, Anish.